The Qatar 1812 kilometer was a total success to kick off this season of the WEC. Records were broken, there was intense side-by-side -side action, strategies, drama, and so much more across this entire event. And in this video, I'll talk all about it. So this is my race review of the 2024 Qatar 1812 kilometer. For this 10-hour endurance race at the Losail International Circuit, Matt Campbell in the number 5 Porsche 963 would qualify on pole position. And for the first time in LMGT3, pole position went to TF Sport, Tom Van Rompuy setting the pace with the number 81 Corvette Z06 GT3R. Unfortunately though, before the race got going, there was already an issue for the Isotto Fraschini entry. Jean-Carl Vernet stopped on the main straight with a suspected hybrid battery issue. Thankfully, the French driver got the car going again, but this meant that the Sota Fraschini entry would not join the other hypercars for the start of the race. So the highly anticipated race began with the number 5 Porsche leading the field away. But surprisingly, out of those top three cars on the grid, none of them would be leading out of turn one. Fourth place driver Miguel Molina got a great start and challenged the Toyota and Porsche down to turn one, taking his Ferrari 499P to the front of the field. Meanwhile, there was contact between the Chip Ganassi Cadillac and the number 94 Peugeot, which sent the 9X8 into a spin. This unfortunately set both entries back. In the GT field, it was a nice start with the 81 Corvette leading the field away, but it wouldn't be that way for long. A few laps later, the number 92 Porsche from Manti Racing would actually make the move on Tom Van Rompuy's number 81 Corvette and take the lead of the LMGT3 class. Meanwhile, in Hypercar, the number 50 Ferrari continued to lead, followed by the number 5 Porsche and the number 93 Peugeot. During this early point in the race, Christensen tried to get past Molina in the number 50 Ferrari, but it just wasn't possible at this point. While Ferrari continued to fend off Porsche for the overall victory, their rivals from last year, Toyota Gazoo Racing, were not in a position to take this win. Those Toyota GR010s were really struggling out there to keep up with the Ferraris and the Porsches, for example. This really wasn't Toyota's day. The best place entry was the number 7 car, and during this time, it was sitting in 8th position. And this was just weird to think about considering that Toyota Gazoo Racing was leading the entire event in the previous race, the 8 Hours of Bahrain. But there were reasons why Toyota was struggling, and I wouldn't judge this race as Toyota's performance throughout the entire season, because the GR010s were heavily impacted by the balance of performance. In fact, Toyota's cars were hit with the heaviest weight penalty across the hypercar field. While we're already on the subject of BOP, it's no secret that it did have an effect on this race. For example, in hypercar, Peugeot and Porsche were in a good spot after the adjustments, meanwhile Toyota and Ferrari were not. But in Toyota's case in particular, it wasn't just about the BOP adjustments. The other manufacturers had clearly made a step forward in performance, and unlike previous rounds of the WEC, Toyota had never raced the GR010 at Qatar before. But anyway, let's get back to the race itself because it wasn't just a battle for the race lead between Ferrari and Porsche. Peugeot was also in the fight. Nico Mueller in the number 93 Peugeot soon took second from Michael Christensen in the number 5 Porsche and hunted down the 50 Ferrari and overtook the 499P. Peugeot was now in the race lead of the Qatar 1812 kilometer. The Swiss driver Nico Mueller was excelling in the 9X8 and started to make a gap between the 50 Ferrari and himself in the Peugeot. Soon after, there was unfortunately big disappointment in the camp of Ferrari AF Corsa, as the second placed 499P, the number 50 Ferrari, received a drive through penalty for crossing the white line at the pit entry. This, of course, was bad news for Ferrari's chances at winning just their second race in hypercar, as it dropped the number 50 car outside the top 10. And I hate to say it, but there was even more bad news for Ferrari, as the rear wing section of the second factory car, the number 51 entry, completely detached from the car. Thankfully, the other cars around didn't collide with the broken off piece, although that McLaren GT car almost did. But this severely hurt Ferrari AF Corsa. The 51 car had to go into the pits for repairs, and this completely ruined Ferrari AF Corsa's chances at taking the win. 
With the Ferraris out of contention, it became a battle for the overall lead between the singular Peugeot 9x8 and the four Porsches right behind. There was bad news in the camp of TF Sport as the Pull City No. 81 Corvette stopped on the pit lane with suspected electrical issues. This, of course, was a huge disappointment for TF Sport, who had been running a really good race with this 81 car. Later on in LMGT3, a move for the lead happened when the number 27 Heart of Racing Aston Martin took the lead of the class from the number 54 Vista A of Corsa Ferrari. It was a commanding send to the inside by Alex Riberas on the Ferrari, which got the Aston Martin to the lead of LMGT3. Meanwhile, back in Hypercar, the prospect of Peugeot leading Qatar was no more as Porsche Penske Motorsport was back in the lead, this time with the number 6 entry. Elsewhere, there was a nice fight between two prestigious Italian manufacturers of Ferrari and Lamborghini. This was a fight I had been looking forward to across the entire winter break. Probably not for the position I would have hoped for, but this was great either way. Lamborghini and Ferrari battling out on track in prototype endurance racing is just magnificent to watch, and hopefully we see more of it as the season progresses. Speaking of Italian manufacturers in hypercar, unfortunately there was bad news for Isotto Fraschini as their Tipo 6 LMHC was forced to retire. Isotto Fraschini were unfortunately not super competitive, but then again, that wasn't what they were aiming for in the first place. Remember, this is Isotto Fraschini's first race, not just in the WEC, but in prototype racing in general. This was always going to be a learning race for Isotto Fraschini, and I'm positive that they'll come back stronger at the 6 hours of Imola in April. I also want to point out that Cadillac's V-Series R was going strong after what happened to them at Turn 1. It was a nice recovery drive by Chip Ganassi Racing. Cadillac also brought one of their IMSA drivers, Sebastian Bourdais, to pilot the car. The French racer was showing some really good times in the Cadillac and helped along with the other two drivers to get that car in a potential top 5 position. There was another retirement in LMGT3 as Manti Racing EMA lost the number 91 Porsche. It's unfortunate that this entry retired considering that its sister entry, the number 92 Manti Porsche, was having a really good race. Speaking of which, there was a lead change when the number 27 Heart of Racing Aston Martin entry, which had taken the lead of the category, had a spin. This resulted in that number 92 Porsche taking back the lead of the LMGT3 class. While Porsche in general was running a really strong race, it's not like the 963s were problem free. An intense moment was brought up for the race leading number 6 Porsche Penske entry. Earlier there was contact with the number 78 Lexus, which actually removed one of the number plates on the number 6 Porsche. The guidelines indicated that the car had to come into the pit lane for repairs to put that number plate back on the entry. What this meant was that if they played their cards right, Peugeot Sport and Hertz Team Jota could be looking at an overall win in hypercar. However, Porsche Penske Motorsport were quick with the fix. Kevin Estra brought the car into the pit lane, and the crew got a sticker of the number panel, slapped it on the car, and the 963 drove away. So Porsche Penske maintained the lead with the number 6 car, but the number 38 Hertz Team Jota Porsche encountered a massive issue. The number 38 car, which was running a really strong race beforehand in around 5th or 6th position, came into the pit lane. It stopped at the pit box with an electrical issue. Hertz Team Jota tried to get the car back out on track, but disappointingly, it was game over for the 38 car, and the Porsche 963 was unfortunately not classified in the official results. Towards the end of the race, we had a pretty good idea who was going to win in both categories, but the racing wasn't quite over yet. In Hypercar, there was still a battle for second position between three LMH and LMDH race cars. Involved in the battle was the number 93 Peugeot, the number 12 Hertz Team Jota Porsche, and the second factory car, the number 5 Porsche Penske. Matt Campbell was hunting down the number 12 Porsche, and that customer entry was hunting down, of course, the number 93 Peugeot, which was leading these three cars. But then, there was drama on the penultimate lap of this race when the number 93 Peugeot slowed dramatically. This was absolutely heartbreaking for Peugeot Sport. They 100% deserved second place. And shockingly, in their final race, 
with this adaptation of the 9x8 hypercar, Peugeot had lost the podium with two laps to go. jean ruc Varne would limp the car across the line to finish, but the damage had already been done. So while it was heartbreak for Peugeot, it was absolute celebration for Porsche. Kevin Estra brought the number 6963 across the line to achieve Porsche Penske Motorsports' first win in the WEC hypercar category. This win broke many records, and because of the Peugeot 9x8 losing the podium, the number 12 Hertz team Joe to Porsche would finish in second, with the other factory car, the number 5 Porsche Penske, crossing the line in third. And what this resulted in was Porsche crossing the line in positions 1, 2, and 3 overall, for only the fourth time in WEC history. And over in the debut race for LMGT3, no change for the lead happened after the spin for the Heart of Racing Aston. Porsche and Manti Racing had taken victory in this category, resulting in Porsche winning in both categories here at the Qatar 18-12 km. It was also later announced that the number 93 Peugeot would be disqualified from the race for using a specific amount of ERS prohibited by the regulations. This was just even more disappointing for Peugeot. The number 94 car didn't finish in the points, which meant that even though this race was going to be the best start for the 9x8 hypercar in the WEC, Peugeot were now at the back of the championship with zero points. Speaking of the championship standings, after the events of Qatar, Porsche soared to the top of the standings in hypercar. Cadillac are in second with that P4 finish from the number 2 entry, and Toyota are now third in the championship. Over in the team standings of LMGT3, the number 92 Manti Pure Racing Porsche is in the lead with their win in Qatar, with the number 27 Heart of Racing Aston in second, and the D-Station Aston Martin in third. The Qatar 1812 km certainly didn't disappoint. But now we are done with the event at the LaSalle International Circuit. We won't return there until next year. But now the season has started. The next event is the Six Hours of Imola in April. So that was my race review of this event. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more endurance racing content and you haven't already, I suggest subscribing by clicking the button in the middle of your screen. You can also watch more videos by clicking the options on either side. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.